DevOps engineer should always try to implement or enforce best practices in the organization. So what are these best practices? Hello and welcome to DevOps video series from K21 Academy. In this video, we will look at best practices for DevOps. We'll cover topics like Kiosk Monkey, Blue Green Deployment and Dependency Injection. Before we move ahead, I would like to recommend our previous video on roles and responsibilities of DevOps engineer. You can also check out our blog on the same by going on to k21academy.com slash devops16. Now let's hear from an expert on top 10 DevOps practices. So as a DevOps engineer, you should always try to implement or you should always try to enforce the best practices in your organization. Starting with that, so let's see the best practice number 10, which is incident command system. So DevOps team should definitely have an incident command system. Why is that? Because if there is any issues or if there is any problems occurring, you should always have a ticketing system to record that. You should always have a tool to record that. So that based on that only you can create or you can do your RCA analysis, which is root cause analysis. And you can find out how that problem occurred and you can mitigate the risk next time. So incident command system is a Point number 10. Point number 9 would be developers on call. So if you would have seen earlier days, you would see only support team people will be on the call every weekend. But for example, consider this case, like there is a production deployment happening. Okay, and if the production build gets failed, so is it possible for the support team member to help us to resolve the production build issues? No, because they have not developed their code. They have now written their code. So it is written by some other developer who is actually in, in an holiday mode or he might be in his house. So how can a support team guy can help us to resolve that production issues? So that is a reason it is always the best practices to have a developer on call for these production releases or for these important releases. So that is one of the best practice. The next one is public status pages. So this is where your chat ops comes into the picture integrating your devops tools with your communication channels like messages or whatsapp or uh, slack channels or teams channels or emails is called as your chat ops so you should always have that best practices in place because whatever things are happening around you should notify to the other people it should not be a surprise to any people who has not come into the picture of DevOps. So even from your senior management to your lawyer management, everyone should know what is happening around. Then comes blameless postmortem. So this is where you should always look into your RCA analysis. So what does that mean? For example, if a production system gone down due to some other release or something, so there should be a blameless postmortem which has to be happened. It is nothing but there has to be a root cause analysis happening around and there has to be a third party judge who has to come in and do it. You cannot do it by yourself or you cannot ask the corresponding team to do it. There has to be a common third party team who has to come and do this root cause analysis without blaming anyone. So even if someone is found guilty, you should not insult in front of everyone. You should call him separately and you should tell him about that and you should give him a warning separately. That is called as your blameless postmortem. That is very important as part of your DevOps team because as a DevOps team, you will be kind of a mix set of talents and you can call it as your cross combination teams. So in such cases, there will be a variety of experiences as part of this team. So you cannot insult anyone or you cannot blame anyone as part of this operations. So blameless postmortem is a main important concept of this DevOps. Next is embedded teams. So if you are working on an agile model, obviously you would be falling under an embedded teams technology because embedded teams are nothing but mixed of variety of terminologies or variety of technologies in a single team like development, testing, operations, database, Unix. So all these combined together is called as your embedded teams. So this comes into the picture when you are following agile of scrum methodology. Next is cloud. So obviously a lot of companies and a lot of small and medium scale business people are migrating from on-premises to the cloud. So that is one of the best uh, possible ways 
to enhance our devops because if you want to have a high availability system with fault tolerance and auto scalable and everything then cloud is one of the best practice that we need to follow next is and and cords and and cords are actually nothing but it's a japanese technology they have introduced in toyota which means if you find something wrong then you have to pull the cord so this will be similar to the cord that you are finding it on your trains so if some if you want to suddenly stop a train you have to pull the chain right so this will be something like that so why it is uh, mainly needed is because for example if developer is actually creating a code and he knows like there is some bug on this code so even if he knows there is some issues he should not send that code to the testing team he should pull the cord there itself he should tell them like no i have seen some issues give me some time let me clear it and let me send it to you and even if the testing team is finding out some issues they should not pass on to the next environment because they know there is a issue so testing team has to stop it and testing team has to tell to the respective people like okay there are some issues we need some time to resolve it because if you pass each and every step and if it is deployed into the production and if the live people or a business is finding out that issue then that becomes a very bad names for the company and for the people that is why we need mainly this and and coach to stop if you find any issues on that particular environments or if you find any issues on that particular stages okay. the next one is dependency injection dependency injections are mainly two types one is people dependency another one is like software dependency people dependency is nothing but uh, you would have heard about certain scenarios like uh, some people would have said like no i don't know about this only that guy knows how to do it or i am not aware of this only a particular guy who knows about this on the particular team or what happens during a critical deployment if that guy is on leave or you are not able to reach that guy then obviously your complete process gets failed so this is called as your people dependency everyone in the team especially an agile team should know what others are doing so it is not like a single person should be dependent on all the things so that is people dependency the next one that we are going to see is code dependency or software dependency so you should not always depend upon a single software to develop a code for example imagine if you are developing a code using java 12 and if your software works only on java 12 but whereas your company has not given a permission to install java 12 on a production environment because they found out like it is quite risky to upgrade your production systems at present so in such cases your code will not work for your lower level environments so that is why we should always make sure like whatever code that we are preparing has to be compatible for all the environments and it has to be compatible to the previous versions as well also if you are actually using any external dependency libraries like log4j or something you should always make sure like it is available within the company because as part of production systems you will not be allowed to download that libraries from external internet so while designing a code you should make sure in all these possible ways the next is blue green deployment so as part of the deployment strategies okay you should generally follow different deployment strategies in which one of this is blue green deployment and there are other things also like canary deployment or ab deployment and lot of things are there in place what is blue green deployment blue green deployment is nothing but i will be having two production systems side by side and one is called as blue and one is called as green so either blue or green will be visible to the customer so if i am making blue as visible to the customer then green will be idle so i will be doing my live deployment on the green and i will be doing a testing on green and then once if i feel like okay green is fine with the latest changes then i will be making a switch between blue and green and then blue will be idle now so i will be doing a same deployment on the blue to make sure both the environments are stable so this is what called as your blue and green deployment the best practice of devops is chaos monkey so what do you mean by chaos monkey this is a practice followed by netflix uh, every year 
they will be having five member team called as simian army they will be allowing that people to go into any of your data centers and they will be asking them to destroy it they will be asking them to unplug all the wires they will be asking them to uh, smash their hard drives and everything but still they will make sure like they are not giving any downtime their environment are stable they are having an auto load auto balancing and everything in place so this kind of mechanism is called as your chaos monkey these are all just a pictorial representation of the best practices the first diagram that you are seeing here is an and and cord if you find something wrong you have to pull the cord and stop it the next one is your chaos monkey this is simian army which goes inside a data center and destroys it the next picture that you are seeing is a blue green deployment and if you see that there is a switch which is going on between blue and green the next one you are seeing is a dependency injection the next one you are seeing is your team which is embedded teams you are seeing developers system admins securities networks dbs so these are all combination of system admins and everyone is a combination of your embedded teams and again these are all another best practices of devops world like continuous delivery pipeline it is nothing but you have to make that ci cd integrated into your place automated deployment again falls under your continuous delivery pipeline microservices uh, it is nothing but on a brief to give you a hint segregating your whole website into each and every parts like for example if your website is like a booking website like redbus.in or any of your booking website uh separating that login page the booking page the payment page and the delivery page into four different halves instead of having one complete web page is called as your microservices decoupled releases and release trains so if you segregate these four websites into a single single one then you can decouple the releases decouple is nothing but i don't need to be dependent on one web page i can deploy login page at any time because it is not going to affect my other pages i can deploy my payment page to the other thing so I, i don't need to wait for the other web page to be completed or i can even deploy to the smaller batches as well next is value stream mapping value stream mapping is nothing but starting from the requirements gathering till the monitoring phase you have to monitor the value of it okay when did i got my requirements when did i created the code when did i deployed the code and how it is going on a monitoring phase you need to check these timelines from the starting of the requirements till the monitoring phase and agile at daily stand up as part of agile teams you will be having a daily stand up calls daily stand up calls is every day 15 minutes and you have to tell them what is the work that you are going to do what are the what is the work that you have done yesterday and is there any bottlenecks that you are facing for this particular work and autonomous squads so we would have seen about this spotify 2.0 squads is nothing but your agile teams that is called as your squads and uh, learning loop learning loop is again part of your feedback integration you should always have your continuous feedbacks going on so that you can learn and you can improvise from your mistakes test driven development is again a part of our agile methodologies where you are going to write the test cases first and then you are going to develop your code this is also as part of your shift left strategy continuous integration obviously you know it is mainly used for your developers to check in the code and automatically do the build every intervals of time automated monitoring is one of the main parts of devops because whatever is happening on the production or off the production you need to be monitoring on daily basis and there are variety of monitoring tools available so depending upon your company's needs you can choose whichever monitoring is available so these are all the best practices of devops That was an expert trainer talking about the best practices of DevOps. You can also check out our blog on top 10 best practices for DevOps by visiting k21academy.com/devops17. DevOps best practices is part of our DevOps Foundation training program where we cover all these topics in detail. If you are not yet DevOps certified and would like to see what to expect in the exam or how to prepare for this exam, I would like to invite you for a free 90 minute session with DevOps Institute as well as Microsoft certified DevOps expert trainer. We'll talk about the DevOps Foundation course. Additionally, we'll show a live demo of website deployment on Docker using Jenkins CI/CD, and talk about different DevOps tools. We'll also share information about certification exam, so you can register for free by going onto this URL: k21academy.com/devops02.
In our next video, we'll be looking at continuous integration and deployment. So I'll see you next week. Please click on the subscribe button if you haven't done that already and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on our upcoming video.